Okay, hello everybody. I'll uh, just stop the uh, share real quick, or I guess I'll start the share, give you guys a quick wave. Welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery class. And um, we're going to dive into some news, obviously a lot going on this week, and unpack the markets and look at some charts and of course uh, do some training on the Crypto Mastery indicators. And uh, so let's see, how have you guys been? Any questions? I've got the chat pulled up here and um, participants window. So I want to say hi to a few people here. We've got Leslie, Sean, Francisco, Doug, Patrick, Terry, Dr. T in the house, Lynn Rose, and uh, that's cool. All right, guys, uh, let's see. Hey, Sean, what's going on? So um, let's still go ahead and dive in. We're going to talk about some news here, what's relevant and get to the charts. And uh, of course, our indicators, what they're telling us and kind of read how to read the tea leaves. And um, overall, I'll just say yesterday was a big push higher and no surprise that we saw a sell-off today. Tuesdays generally kind of sell-off. And of course, there's some new news we'll dive into. So um, the uh, big news was, uh, you know, three things contributed to the big pump yesterday. The assassination attempt on Trump really, I think, will galvanize the Republican Party and the markets are digesting it as such. And so a higher likelihood that he and his crypto friendly platform, along with his new VP pick, uh, J.D. Vance, who I've never heard of before, but apparently they're pro crypto. So that's good for us, as well as the possibility that they'll be in office uh, the next um, <laughs> the next administration. Anything can happen, though. We never know. I'm not here to uh, get into politics. But uh, anyway, Bitcoin surged to two week high Monday after the attempted assassination. That was one of the causes. And I'll just touch on the other two. There's a lot of ads in this uh, particular article, so I'll go ahead and close that off. The other two factors, of course, are Germany stopped selling. They they ran out of Bitcoin. They were dumping all the Bitcoin that they had uh, confiscated. It wasn't the country of Germany. It was a small city in Germany that had confiscated it and sort of by their laws, they had to um, unload that. Now, that may go down as one of the worst decisions in history. Uh, right before the markets took off again. And then <clears throat> there was a, a third factor, you know, some favorable economic data that came out last week. And of course, the ETH ETF was just uh, approved as well. So um, now there's some negative news and headwinds coming at us. There's some more FUD we'll dive into, but uh, just unpack that this was kind of the big catalyst over the weekend and even on Monday. So, um, you know, Bitcoin, if it, Let's just see. Uh, 65K, um, I'm going to show you in the charts. I've been saying 66K for weeks would be the likely test point. Uh, maybe we got close enough to it that we'll revert back down again. But just to hop over on the uh, charts here, uh, the uh, Bitcoin chart, we've had that drawn in this red box right there. So it got close enough. It really actually did touch that that lower boundary of the sell order block. A lot of sell orders right at this 65.3 area so it bounced right off of that i've had this black line you guys drawn on here for weeks which you guys know and this thing's following it almost exactly so i um, mean i just these squiggly lines have been somewhat prophetic uh, and so we'll see the big test is going to come when we get it up in this range at the fifth attempt of the this upward trend line which is rejected four times now the fifth attempt is critical that we get above it but I think a pullback here is going to be a good thing. And look at this, you guys. Isn't this ironic? My uh, squiggly line here retraced right to the middle of the buy block. It wasn't there when I drew this. And so these buy blocks on our ERI Pro show where buys, uh, heavy buying has already happened in contrast to our order block detector, which are showing the orders that are on the books on the buy side and sell side. So that's why I drew this. Uh, I think this is what this means is more than likely it will pull back here. I'll go to full screen again. It'll come back down and sort of retest this buy block region and then shoot higher. Um, what happens here is really going to be important. And, and certainly I think we could pull back a little bit and, uh, and go higher or, you know, um, if it, they all they love to fake things out right at the top. And um, we'll come back to this. So we'll discuss this here in a minute. Of course, we do, I've been to that a little bit more detail in our M3 class tomorrow. But let's get back to the news and uh, finish that off. So basically, they're saying uh, Bitcoin may test its all time high if it rises above 65K. One analyst uh, notes, um, you know, I, would, I disagree with that. We've already seen this sort of rejecting at 65K. It really needs to get above 67K to have a shot at a new all time high. But more than likely, that will pull back down again. 
Uh, and so let's see, Bitcoin Jump Monday as investors raise their bets on a Trump presidential victory. And uh, let's see. So we've talked about this, just running back through this. The uh, it's funny they're calling it the uh, so-called Trump trade. So, you know, I'm nobody had told me that I was saying that over the weekend. That was likely the uh, cause. So I got that right here, it looks like. And uh, won't go too far down the rabbit hole how the Trump trade has taken over the bond market. Um, you know, certainly most business owners and crypto investors are pro Trump in terms of um, why they'd like to see him back in office. And uh, you guess, yeah, you know, there's there's obviously a lot of um, dynamics to both candidates. And so, um, you know, let's see, Trump has been perceived. This is this may be or likely will be a single issue election for crypto investors because we're going to vote with our wallets. And, uh, you know, look, we want to make sure that it's a favorable regulatory environment. And so at least one of the candidates, Trump, has switched gears with his stance to crypto with a former VP or the former president now embracing the industry uh, after blasting in the past because he didn't really understand it. His VP apparently is pro crypto as well. Uh, J.D. Vance. Hey, the good news is they only have to change two letters on the uh, the ticket uh, signs and posters from Pence to Vance. That's a <laughs> that's an easy one. Maybe there's some psychology to that. They just uh, they go with the alliteration of these things and that it's less about who the VP is. I don't know. Um, just some speculation there. Trump campaign started accepting donations in crypto. That's a good idea. And hopefully they'll they'll help run it up because people with more money will uh, donate more. I think I, I read um, that Elon's going to be donating $15 million to Trump's campaign. Now, is it per month? I, it's not going to be per day, but uh, he was he's going to be donating quite a bit. And uh, let's see, crypto mining companies reportedly pitched himself as a crypto president. So we'll have to see, you know, that would be the best case scenario for us and um, and likely for the economy as well. So uh, at any rate, um, try promising to GAP, promising to defend crypto, uh, you, you know, I'm fairly sure he can barely spell Bitcoin, but uh, at the same time, they want to be elected. And that's what these guys always do. So um, we've unpacked this enough. Nothing else really to see here. I'll pull up Crypto Panic just to see if anything's breaking. But uh, we did get the SEC approval, preliminary pr approval on the ETH ETF. So that was good news. Also helped push things higher. And um, let's see. I had uh, thought I clicked on this. Let me get over to the ETH. And as soon as Jeff Bezos, this uh, bank bill broke it, it's something else. So let's jump over here. So the big news is, and what's uh, a little bit troublesome, and some headwinds now coming out of the uh, the uh, east. If we had winds behind us on the west, now we are facing these from the east. Uh, the Mt. Gox has just shifted nine uh, shifted nine billion in Bitcoin uh, for a possible sale. Now we knew that was out there, and they have until October to sell it. Probably they didn't want to double up while Germany was dumping. And, but they have had uh, transfers of 140,000 Bitcoin, and uh, this is apparently from eight hours ago. So I just – I don't know how current this is. This is brand new. It sounds like it is. So according to Arkham Data Intelligence, uh, we usually look at that and sometimes look at that in our N3 Active Trader class uh, on Wednesdays. Uh, and so they still own 140,000 Bitcoin in the main wallet worth $8.7 billion. You know, it's significant, you guys, because if we remember that uh, when the ETFs came out for Bitcoin, it was about $10 billion initially uh, that was being bought up by, of course, BlackRock and Fidelity, and that moved the market quite a bit. So if suddenly we were to have $9 billion, uh dumped onto the markets, it's going to push prices down. So uh, we have to sort of really be aware of this. And so um, let's see, two unknown wallets. We'll have to see. You know, I would imagine some of this would be bought over the counter, and I'd be surprised to see it moved into like an on-exchange wallet. And uh, so we'll have to just kind of see how this works. Let's see, Bitcoin price CPI gains last one hour. Mt. Gox sells off. We'll take a look at the DXY and just kind of see what's going on. But it's saying that the combined volume of Mt. Gox Bitcoin on July 16th today amounted to 990,000 Bitcoin. So we're seeing a bit of a sell-off in the markets. But, you know, we saw, here's the point, we saw how well the markets absorbed the Germany Bitcoin that was being sold off and with barely any uh, dip down. I'm just going to, we'll talk about in the minute on the charts. I, I do feel that squiggly line will play out. We'll see a pullback here. We'll see a push up to retest that old high. But because we have so much supply, available supply, 
you know, that's going to be a really important area. And, um, you know, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but uh, usually those breakouts work or don't work at the third or fifth attempt. If we reject for a fifth attempt, we've got trouble below. And this could be a coming from this Mt. Gox Bitcoin. So it's uh, it could go either way, you guys. And so we're going to have to watch and be very careful. I'll be taking profits around that 66K level if we push up higher and certainly above um, at that possible rejection level of that upper trend line on Bitcoin and the total market cap just to be safe. So um, we'll talk about why, and I'll show you that. I do want to just sort of talk about this a little bit more. Of course, they are going to be distributing Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash to creditors. Most of the Bitcoin Cash will be just sold off. There's, they don't, you know, these are old school Bitcoin hodlers. They don't want Bitcoin Cash. They'll just sell all that off to go buy more Bitcoin. Most, uh, most likely, uh, the rehabilitation debtor as Mt. Gox again, um, giving out, you know, re replenishing um, about 9 billion Bitcoin. And so it says here, carried out 9 billion Bitcoin as of today. So, and the promise of prompt repayments could come to fruition before August. So it doesn't sound like these have, it's, it's kind of hard to unpack that. Carried out over 9 billion in Bitcoin outflows July 16th. So that means the amount Gox Bitcoin has been moved to other wallets. And um, so they maybe haven't started doing the repayments yet. And they're saying that it could come before August. So I have been sort of speculating another drop down here in August and the market cycle low may not be till the end of August. So we have to be a little bit cautious here still. And uh, let me uh, close this. We'll look at our next news story and then hop over to the charts to look at our indicators and what they're telling us. Uh, they've had some amazing uh, calls here in the last few days and over the weekend. But again, uh, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin eyes, Malcox recovery, min warning, and over Bitcoin price dipped to 58K. You know, we've had 58K on the charts for some time. Now that 58K uh, window or buy block has sort of disappeared. The buy block's now on 54K. So, um, but you know, we were targeting, and I've been saying 58K for a while as an area of interest. So uh, at any rate, well, new information equals new decision. We might have some lower lows to test or retest that 54K range. So uh, let's see. Um, this is, I think we already covered this here. Bitcoin clings to classic disbelief rally. That's interesting. You know, this in the cycle of investor emotions, if we want to pull that up, it's a pretty uh, a traditional, I'll just pull this up here. So cycle of crypto emotions and uh, or investor emotions, you know, when things do start to take off, there's usually that disbelief area, that uh, disbelief phase, which I think we could be experiencing right now. And so let's see, I'm trying to find a visual on this without having you guys. Here it is. So there's a number of these online. You can Google them. And let me bring that over here. Let's see. Uh, okay, here we go. So I'll move that over. You guys can see this now. So basically, uh, this is the cycle. You know, this euphoria was back in the 2021, January of 2022, really started to come down, started to fade. Of course, we got that right in our indicators. We're telling us to get out of the markets. I was telling people and telling you guys to get out of the markets, getting into cash, September, October, November, and December of 2021. And then January of 2022 was pounding the table, get out of the markets. Some of you listened, and I know at least one of you saved $100,000 by doing that. Uh, the problem is many people get into denial, anxiety, and fear and hold on all the way down. Some of you, uh, some of our clients have done that, and they're just, we're pushing back up in this range. But where are we? We're sort of in this um, phase of disbelief. So, and on um, this whole area, we've got optimism, excitement, thrill. Where's the disbelief phase? Uh, despondency, capitulation, these things are different uh, for all of these, but um, on some of them here, I have one on my, uh, my desktop, actually. Uh, where is that? I'll go find this for a second because that's the one that has that disbelief uh, portion and uh, you guys can see it a little bit more clearly. Of course, it's now hidden on my desktop somewhere. And where did it go? So I've got that. <laughs> I've got to move these out of the way. Here it is. Wall Street Cheat Sheet. I've got it right here, you guys. So let's take a look at this. And this will give us a little bit better visual once this opens up. But again, you know, um, right in here, nice little sell block at 66K, 65.8. And um, that's also putting some pressure on the markets. All right. Finally, this thing's opening up for us. And that is not here. It is so. I have to open that up. There, okay. Can you guys see this? I didn't want to show 
should have opened that. That should have opened in a different format. But at any rate, now you guys can see um, with the overlay, um, the sort of disbelief. See this right over here? The This is a sucker's rally. Let me let me find this, actually, because uh, I want to show you the right one and I'll pull it off screen. So that is a sort of Wall Street and the mark emotion cycle i guess and yeah that's it so basically uh, i think I've, here it is i found it the one i was showing you was the uh, overlap of the actual markets on crypto's price plot pricing so this is the one so basically ignoring everything else here we've got uh this disbelief this is a sucker's rally is what they're referring to and then of course it takes off so if we look at over the left side of the chart that's where we can see uh, that little bit of a dip, and uh, then it really uh, takes off. And so, so anyway, uh, I think we've covered that. There's various versions of this you guys can find online. And uh, I was going to try to find a uh, larger one here for you guys. But here, a copy image address. We'll do that just to be thorough so you guys can see. I want to make sure you can see this on the recording. And uh, there we go. So uh, disbelief suckers rally right in here after we've been pulling up coming out of the bear markets. This is also right before things start to take off into hope, optimism and the really big rally. All right. So with that out of the way, let's jump back over to the news. Where did that go? And um, let's see <laughs> got a number of windows open here. You guys bear with me. Here's where's my news. All right. Over here. Coming back to this on Mount Gox. Uh, Bitcoin clings to a classic disbelief rally, according to Coin Telegraph. Um, you, you know, not the uh, be all end all of news, of course, but um, let's just skim through anything that might be worthwhile. I don't want to necessarily get into these charts here. We'll do our own. And um, so, NLC supports Bitcoin rage reclaim. Okay, let, let's move on. Bitcoin uh, soars and predictions of Trump victory after assassination attempt. We talked about that. And also the SEC has given preliminary approval to at least three ETFs. So that's good news. And that's going to help helping to surge prices. So uh, we'll see how things go. We're not going to see as much money go into ETH ETFs as Bitcoin, but um, could be pleasantly surprised. So basically the SEC approval is a contingent on applicants submitting, submitting final offering documents according to a July 15th report. So, um, you know, look, it's, it's, it's on the way. Uh, the money's not going to flow in all overnight. Uh, these things take time for the the family offices and the institutions to go and get on the phones and say, hey, we think we should buy this thing called Ethereum now. So um, let's see. I want to keep going on this. We covered the cycle of unbest for emotions already there and there. Let's do this and come over to Crypto Panic. See if there's any other relevant news that might be breaking. And so let's see, Meta Planet Bitcoin could hit hundred thousand. Uh, look, at, we are we already been saying that for um, for years now, but uh, yeah, Mount Gox also on the sell train. So uh, let's see, and of course we've got um, Craig Wright, the proclaimed owner and creator of of Bitcoin, has been accused of perjury. So the UK government's going after him. He's not the guy, uh, apparently. So. Um, uh, kind of a ballsy and, and arrogant of him to come out and say he's uh, Satoshi. So although he was uh, he was uh, involved early, and uh, let's see what is this about. So Mt. Gox, okay, that's the Mt. Gox hacks. I saw hacks. Want to make sure there wasn't a new hack in the markets. So anyway, um, there's a lot, uh, not a whole lot going on. We can go over to Decrypt here and see if there's anything this is an article specifically the eth etf i was looking at yesterday and shared with our m3 members so uh, essentially let's see right over to the overall main page here let's uh let's see scenes or dj better planet i think we've covered it you know there's not a whole lot else in here Bitcoin top 64K as proxy stocks, Microsoft, sorry, MicroStrategy, Coinbase surge. By the way, um, I'm not probably supposed to share this, but I heard a rumor from a, a little bird who told me that uh, Michael Saylor is going to be selling MicroStrategy. And so and that may already be in the works. So um, I would see that as uh, where do you think he'll put all of his money from the sale? He's going to put it into Bitcoin, you guys. Absolutely, he will. So, all right, that's about all I want to cover on the news. Any questions on that, you guys? And uh, one quick thing, too, I want to remind you of. We'll put it in the chat. We have a very interesting class here this Friday at noon Eastern. Make sure you register for this. This is our market cycle 
Timing Secrets with Juan Villaverde, and he was one of our guest interviews on the Future of Crypto Summit. Um, very highly regarded. Uh, th this is a this is a must see because if you're not familiar with market cycles, they exist and they can time the markets much better than anything I've seen. And there are cycles within cycles. I was watching another video this morning pointing out that every six months or so, Bitcoin has a bottom. That's a 180 day cycle. And uh, this is gonna be talking about how you can how you can overlay these and how you can figure these out. Because along with our indicators, the knowing the timing of when a market shift is gonna happen, so important. I'm really looking forward to this. It's an excellent uh, presentation and uh, I wanna share this with you guys. You can get signed up for this here at uh, moonstream.io slash um, uh, market dash secrets okay so that'll take you here and then you just click on the button and uh, get signed up for that that's going to be friday at noon eastern definitely want to be on that one is great currently uh, head of uh, research department at weiss research so let me do this i will put it in the uh, chat here i do see some questions so i'll just drop that link to that in the chat and again it's uh, moonstream.io slash market dash secrets and uh this uh can't say and recommend this strongly enough you don't hear me say that often you guys and um, the team's been busy at work putting this all together so let me see i have some comments here it would be funny if sailor pickle sailor bought gamestop um that that would be funny that's interesting perry says um so i don't think that's going to happen though he he'll he's a perma bull and a, a bitcoin maxi uh i was uh, supposed to meet him a couple weeks back at a uh, party at his house in annapolis but i uh, couldn't get the invite quite yet let's see selling is really hard um i know you're saying in a range to sell a 66k range yeah we may have missed that uh, paul it may got right up to it and so what are we at today? We had a bit of a bounce off of the 50-day uh, EMA from earlier today, but uh, I would expect to pull back here. Probably what we'll see is we'll see a day or two pullback, and holding above the 50-day EMA is bullish, and then uh, another push up into that 66K range, which may reject back to the 62K area. Um, hard to say. Uh, we do have some bullish momentum still with our indicators, and we'll get to that here shortly. So let's say, uh, I don't know if I can bring myself to do the same. Fearful of having to buy it back higher level, Paul says. Um, look, I'm, I'm just, I'm telling you, we're going to pull back here at 66K some degree, and then we're going to have some rejection here at 70K. 70k 500 now if we do push above it what they do they play games at these high levels this what's going to happen is um longs will go leverage long here and um or i'm sorry the shorts depends what they do if they push it above and we close above this briefly then all the longs will go leverage long and then they'll drop it to wipe out those guys and flip everybody short and then we'll do the same thing when they'll do a short squeeze to push it back higher again so there's one or two things that'll happen up at this vantage point. Either we'll continue on, break through, retest it, and then go higher, okay? Uh, or we'll see a rollover here and a pullback in just say the 66K range and then shoot up higher. Those are the two scenarios. We have to be ready for both because, uh, but it's it's not going to just keep going higher, I don't believe. You know, without some kind of a retest of some support level in here, maybe maybe it, it plays out and it's the 50-day moving average. Uh, but there's, um, you know, this is what I'm expecting. And uh, just this is what is likely to happen, these kind of rejects, rejections here. We saw the same thing too. Just remember, and I called this perfectly. I said right up to this old all-time high, I said, I think we push up to a new all-time high and then they bring it back down. Same thing. This was the old all-time high. If I zoom out, we saw this. Uh, we saw this. Uh, what's going on here? Um, 66.5, uh, the, trend line, the trend line target right up in here. So I said back in that time that we'll push up above it. That was a Sunday. I said Monday they'll push it up here and let's see it was right in this area and uh and then do a fake out on that or maybe it was this one uh this one this is the one i said i think we're going to push up higher retest the high and then they're going to sell it off trying to wipe out the shorts because that's how the market makers have to make their money at these key inflection points for now we have our eyes focused on what the near term you know either we come in a little bit a day or two of sell-offs because remember on bitcoin we had one two three four days of upside up prices that's rare that we see four days in a row okay and without some consolidation unless we're in the parabolic phase and we're not yet 
Uh, this was the early part of that prayer lock phase with the ETF mania. So uh, we'll take a look at ETH in a minute. But I believe what will happen here is we either we push up in this range again and then we sell off back down to this uh, 62K area and then kind of do this kind of a move, at which point we'll retest that upper trend line around 70K, 71K, and again, either reject, pull back, bounce off of here, like jumping off the roof onto the trampoline. We need to see some kind of a support to push it higher or we break up above and retest this as support. So either one of these scenarios are likely. I'm kind of leaning toward this one where there's some hesitation up at top and then it breaks above, comes back and retests. And that's what we want to see because then the bull flag is intact and that bull flag putting us the measured move upwards of around 100K. So anyway, I think we covered all the news, didn't we? Um, yes, we did. So make sure to get registered for this. And what we'll do now is I want to come back over and just start looking at the charts and work our way backwards. So let's see. Samson now, uh, never below five, so just getting, uh, no news there. So basically what we're seeing here on the uh, weekly time frame, I'll jump to the monthly in a minute. Uh, I want to call your attention to our multi time frame radar, one of one of the amazing signals that we have in the uh, crypto mastery indicators, and of course you can find those at uh, cryptomastery.org/pro, and uh, you can learn more about those there because these are a must have if you're watching the replay uh go over to cryptomastery.pro uh guys we're not here to sell you things you don't need we're here to give you the tools to succeed and win as we are doing um watch this video on the crypto mastery indicators there's a number of different ways you can get your hands on these but these are the best i've ever used and this is what we're using here in our trading so with that in mind, the multi time frame radar, when these all go green, green is go. When we see these all go green, we're going to be sort of you know, getting in this market. I use a daily, weekly, monthly, and three month. If you're swing trading or short term trading, you can adjust these just by going to the uh, the settings and changing those to shorter time frames if you'd like. So I think I'm having a memory uh, issue here. There we go. So basically. Uh, you can change those time frames if you want a day trade. You could do, you can set this to a one minute, three minute, 15 minute, and an hourly. I do that sometimes. But for your longer term trading, uh, we are looking at this multi time frame radar. So on the monthly time frame, we're a little bit bearish, uh, bullish on the daily, weekly, and quarterly. So I do like this. I do think we break above soon. It's just a little bit of uncertainty going into August. So, um, you know, I would certainly be in the market, but be looking to take some profits here as we push up closer to some of those resistance areas. All right, so this is a lot to look at. Let me go full screen for you guys, and let's do that here again. This is a, a weekly time frame. Um, and so what I see here on the chart itself, this is called a three inside up. This is a bullish pattern. So what I will call your attention to is our the uh, crypto... Uh, Moonstream Crypto Trader Success Checklist. You can find this and get this for free also at moonstream.io slash free checklist. And you can download your copy of the uh, Trader Success Checklist. And all you have to do with this is check these off. You know, once you download it here, um, you'll have to open the PDF up to make it interactive. But I'm going to show you how you can use this to have much greater success within your trading because once you're able to do this, and uh, and show the uh, a higher when you have a score of two or three out of 21, then that's a trade worth taking. Okay, so on this example, the first thing I notice, as I mentioned, the three inside up is this chart pattern where it is a bullish chart pattern. So if we go down to this page here, here it is called the three inside up. Essentially, it is when you have a bearish candle like this and then two bullish candles within, within the other one that kind of break above the uh, high up here. So it's defined as three inside up bullish, a bullish pattern. So I'll check that off. And basically it's saying a reversal pattern composed of a large down candle, a smaller up candle contained within the bolt bearish candle, and then another up candle that closes above the second candle here. Okay, so that's a three inside up, likely more upside there. Had we had an all green radar, we would check off this, but we don't have that yet. So we'll go up to the top of our checklist and say, do we have our four horsemen, which are the ERI, the TSI, the signal line, and our, and our new RSI has replaced the trend indicator, but they're pretty much universal. So, and I am seeing uh, quite a few bells trend on the trend indicator showing up. So um, if this is all new to you, bear with us. We'll cover this here. 
But uh, I want to get back over at this point. Where are the the, uh, the charts have disappeared here? Hold on, you guys. Uh, market timing secret. This one right there. Um, gotcha. Okay. So basically, what we're looking at here on a Bitcoin time uh, weekly time frame down below, we've got a RSI here on the weekly. Let me get to the daily because usually I'm looking at daily mostly. Um, for the weekly, though, we do have a weekly RSI printing this bullish divergence here. So these are some of our new pro indicators that you can learn about at cryptomastery.org slash pro. Uh, you definitely need to have these. If you're not trading with them, you're at a disadvantage. And we built them to be that. We've been fine-tuning them for years. And, of course, created by our quant engineer partner, Joe. Uh, so a couple things I'm seeing here, the MACD sort of oversold, turning up a bit. Uh, we want to pay attention to the monthly on this <clears throat> part, you know, it, you know, on the monthly time frame. One of the signals that I used to call the month, the top back in here was that monthly MACD. It has some room to go higher, but we're starting to see on the parabola, it's starting to sign a kind of wane on the moving average convergence divergence. So still indicates where we could push up higher to a top, but we want to keep an eye on that on that monthly time frame. And uh, on the monthly time frame, a couple months ago, we were seeing some bearish divergence. So that's interestingly forecasted this uh, this downturn right here. But we had many signals, especially on our weekly RSI. So uh, let me show you that. I do want to call your attention to the IBIT here. And uh, we have a gap on the IBIT here. So over the weekend, when you know the institutions are closed, Wall Street's closed, and of course, the, the ETFs were closed. This is why it gapped up. So price shot way up here. Now these gaps, um, I liken them to the CME. So this gap sort of filled almost, it just barely filled. And, but where this gap filled. So we'd be looking for a retest here potentially to come back down on the IBIT to retest that. Uh, doesn't mean it has to, but uh, these gaps have been filling on that IBIT for hour. So we can also have a look at the CME. Uh, worth paying attention to because on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange CME, where we, we do see these gaps, these gaps more likely more often fill. So, um, you know, we had that gap right in here. Most gaps have filled. I've circled these. There's only one gap that really hasn't filled, and I don't think we'll ever see that. That was at 98.75 all the way back and down in this range. I don't even know where I think it's. That was way, way back, and you can see all these gaps that I circled here. This is it, all the way back here. Uh, we're not going to see that. That was back in July of 2020. The rest of the CME gaps filled. See this one here? So basically, and when you see these gaps, they fill. So it came down on this, filled that one. Looks like there's a CME gap there that didn't get filled, so that's interesting. And uh, let's see, got a telemarketer calling on the other line. Wonderful. But you can see how these CME gaps do very often, if not almost always fill. So let's, uh, let me just drag this back over so we can see what we have to work with now. So we want to pay attention to that. You know, um, that is a bit, uh, bit bearish. And in the sense that at some point, it doesn't have to be now, but we would come back and, and gap fill that on the CME. We'd like to get it out of the way sooner than later, of course. And um, let's see what, where did that go? Um, oh yeah, right there. So I, it's uh, that gap, but you can see all these gaps have all filled in the past. And so we'll keep an eye on that. You know, I'll set an alert as well. So let's do an alert just to make sure that, so we know when that CME gap fills. And if it does, so crossing down and 58.65, so I'll just put CME gap fill. Now, that would be a bullish sign. If we see that uh, gap filled, then we should be off to the races with that out of the way. Uh, we have touched on why these happen, but we're not going to touch on it today. Uh, as far as our signals here, we've got pretty bullish signals on uh, on the overall markets here. So let's go to Bitcoin on this uh, daily chart with our crypto mastery tools and let's just have a look at what we see here i will put this away for a moment and uh, again uh, these uh this chart this price action following you know what i had drawn weeks ago which really followed to the t it's amazing um but these buy blocks are so important so um one of our new pro indicators are these buy order blocks showing where there's a lot of buy pressure we've seen this play out time and time again where price comes down into these ranges and, and reverses. Similarly on the sell blocks, and those of you that uh, were have been watching these classes, we had heavy sell blocks up here right above this on, uh, on Bitcoin 
uh, up until the last week. So that's interesting. They have largely disappeared, though. Do you see that? So that means that's interesting. We've seen a lot of those sell orders going to disappear. And I didn't expect that. So with that bullish momentum yesterday, I guess a lot of the uh, sellers were taking them out. So this is actually a very bullish sign because um, remember we had that on there. We can see that on the total market count because I have an image. That's why I took a screenshot of that. Let's see if I can find it in here somewhere. Where did that image go? Do you guys remember from last week I had a screenshot? Maybe I took it off. Well, on the total market cap, we still have that sell pressure. So surprising to see it gone on Bitcoin. But it, this is the surrogate. And of course, we'll, we'll see a resistance at that $3 trillion mark when we get there. So that's another big profit area. Why? That was the total market cap back here in November of 2021. Um, this is what we'll be watching for market cap signals. And of course, um, the same setups that we saw calling these is what we saw back in here where, where we called this top uh, recently. But at any rate, um, this here line has is, is been invalidated, of course. I thought if it does break above here, but I'm just going to move it, you guys, because again, if we break above this up to downward trending uh, resistance line, which is now here, very likely that retests. And then look at that. that, that this plays out even closer, right to $3 trillion. And uh, I would expect something like that plays out. So break above, retest, and then we're off to the races. And so, again, watching the total market cap there. Mostly green on the radar. Uh, of course, we saw some bottoming action coming out of these buy blocks. Uh, TSI green and signal line green, RSI green from back a bit before. Not really easy to read because some of those signals were a bit older. But uh, let me jump over to Bitcoin and uh, see what that looks like. Let me just read some questions. What percentage of time do gaps fill in the short term? Um, I don't know. That's a Google question, Perry. Um, often those gaps take months and if not many months and sometimes years, but um, it just depends. There's there's no average on that that I can I can take uh, I can tell you. Perry or Paul says I love these buy and sell blocks. Provides great indicators for me as a novice. Yeah, thank you, Paul. I mean, this is the one of the big breakthroughs that we've added since 2021. That and our our Bollinger bands. So I'll turn these on because if you're using Bollinger bands off the shelf, you're using them wrong. Uh, a Bollinger band settings is not set correctly. If you use the free Bollinger bands in Trading View or any other platform, uh, they uh, they are set incorrectly. And uh, I noticed just two years ago that the standard deviations that they use in the base model, which work fine for stocks, the increased volatility for crypto, you want to change that to a third standard deviation. And uh, that's what we've done in our Bollinger Band indicator here. So between the buy and sell blocks and our Bollinger Band Pro, so that would be this upper red line. You see how whenever it sort of touches that, it contains price action. And um, whenever, often when it gets above, you know, or touches uh, and closes above the upper Bollinger Band, it either goes sideways or sells off. And on the short time, on the downside too, we see when it goes down below the lower Bollinger Band, this was an excellent buy signal, broke down a lower Bollinger Band on Bitcoin daily. This is total market cap rather, and then and got into the buy zone, pushed back up here. So likely we'll push up to the upper Bollinger Band. Uh, my good friend, Steve Nissan taught me that. It goes typically from one edge of the Bollinger Band to the other. So right here, total market cap touched the lower Bollinger Band, and then it worked, bounced up to the top one, and then it worked it way back down to the bottom one again. Okay, if you haven't don't know that, you can't unsee that. That's very powerful to uh, keep that in mind. Let me just get over to Bitcoin. I wanted to uh, be on this. Let me use a different chart that's not quite as... Um, covered in indicators but you can see still the 66k level going to give us some resistance here we're still in a downward uh trending you know flag a flagpole pattern this is the flag so until and unless we break out of that flag you know uh we're still in a downward trending uh, pattern here and so certainly we can come back down on this 55 55k region for a bigger draw up higher, I do think we're going to see some sell off here at 66k. Whether we whether that was it, I think we'll probably pull back and we have another push up into 66k and then that pullback. That's just my guess. But uh, looking at our indicators here, mostly green on our signals here. So uh, this is the trend strength indicator. Whenever that goes from red to green and above 20. Going back to our trade success checklist, since we don't have an ERI, we'll use our TSI as another one. So now we've got TSI above 20, 
and the signal line is also turned from red to green, which we can see in this other indicator there. These are measuring different things. So you're looking con for confluence and uh, that's really important. Also seeing kind of a lower low bottoming here, but looking like a nice push higher. Of course, this vertical line here is showing the trend indicator without having to have it on there. So that's our bell signal, which is our longer term swing by. And so we don't even have to turn that on. We know that's showing a bell indicator. So I'm going to do that. Uh, we will add it on here just for showing this as well. And uh, of course, we have our RSI down here green. So we've got a number of things pointing bullish. Let me add the uh, trend indicator to this chart because, you know, there's no one indicator that can tell you th this is time to buy or sell. What we're looking for is confluence from that and being like a detective like Sherlock Holmes and being of a confluence of indications and clues that we're going to head that way. So here I mentioned this vertical green line. You see how that's our key bell. Our bell is our buy signal, and we're in only in a number three in the key bell sequence. Looks like I did have it on there and just had it hidden. But when we start seeing confluence on these, these are those signs that it's really time to buy. We saw that our indicator showed that Saturday, you guys. So this was clear. We were pushing up against a 21-day EMA. If you had our indicators, and if you have our indicators, we saw that. I was buying on Saturday and looking at this as well and posting it in our N3 Trader group because, again, confluence. We had a bounce out of the buy block zone down here after touching the lower Bollinger Band. So we're adding clues as we go. The trend strength indicator triggered green a bit early over here, but I uh, really saw it go green with the TSI and then the key and the bell. So that's, uh, that's the signs that we follow. And Perry also says, I literally... Um, um, that's funny. Uh, okay. Well, Perry, I literally had telemarketers say call exactly when, yeah, I had one call. They, they probably have the call everybody at the same time, Perry. So anyway, um, guys, let's look at a few other things here. So again, and if you haven't already checked out, but here's, let me finish this point because once you have a, a trend, a score, a success score of two or more, you want to be adding to that trade. So now we have a trend trade success score, if I show it down at the bottom, of four out of 21. And that's actually going to be more because does this trend indicator have a green midline? Normally they will if there's a bell, but not always. So when this midline turns from red to green, that's also a bullish signal here. So we have that and we can check that off. Do we have any bullish engulfing candles in here? Oh, we had a little one back in here, actually. Um, that does count, you know, bullish engulfing candles. So, and then is the candle at body support above a trend line. So now we are, you can see this, we're at a trend line, the 50 day EMA, even though it's a bearish uh, candle here, it came back and, and held at that 62.5 level. This is still a bullish sign. So I will check that off. And uh, what else can we do? Is the price above the 21 and 50? It is another bullish signal. Is price above a rising support trend line? Uh, you could certainly make that argument, but um, uh, you know, I think we're um, we have a couple things here. Here's how I would draw this trend line, and I want to be careful not to be looking for lines in the sand that don't exist. But certainly, there's buy support and strength in there. You can also draw this kind of a trend line. So our trade success score is very good at this point. And do we have it breaking above trend line resistance? That's another one. I know there's a lot on this chart and I don't want to remove anything necessarily, but we also had trend line resistance through here that it just broke through. Remember we were watching that symmetrical wedge. So I was watching that breakout over the weekend and also on Solana, which had a very similar one. So now we have a 10 out of 21 success score and that gave would have given us the confidence to really buy in in this range. And I still think it's bullish here based on this it just we want to be careful that resistance area just above at 66k for some taking profits and certainly at the upper edge of this trend channel which is also going to be our bollinger band uh, we know that contains price as we can see all the way through here and uh, we'll be watching for that uh, very carefully incidentally our buy signal if you're new here that allowed us to actually call this turn down and those of you that were there knew I sent out an alert to our M3 Active Trader members that um, I'm seeing the same signals as we saw on the market cycle high back in 2021. And that was our early reversal indicator on this weekly time frame, this red arrow, a bearish engulfing candle. And of course, we had other bearish signals in here, such as our RSI 
that uh, went went uh, red here, our TSI going red, our, our trend strength indicator going red. And so the signs were there, you guys. And so uh, let me just see. I want to make sure I'm in the right version of Bitcoin because, yeah, that was this. It was this one um, on Coinbase. Some of these are a little bit different. So I'm using one. The let, let me go back to that just to make sure you guys saw that. These are the same signals we'll be looking for at the market cycle top, you guys, right here. Again, bearish engulfing candle on the weekly time frame, bearish early reversal indicator. And uh, we had also our TSI that had gone red and below 80 a little bit early. But then having this RSI on the weekly time frame, I was telling you guys, guys, I think this thing's rolling over. And sure enough, we had that drop. Uh, and so th these that is our those are our main signals that we'll be watching for in this next phase when the bull market comes. And you, you need to have these indicators to see it. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Let's see. Total market cap, we covered that. And let's see. Is there anything else? Um, let's, yeah, sure. Paul says, can you again briefly explain the solid red arrows and green dots in the RSI Pro? Uh, solid red, yeah. Okay, so basically... In the RSI Pro, um, this is a, a little different than your normal RSI. We can see these overbought conditions here in the red when it's above this uh, 69 uh, zone. And the red dots signify a bearish divergence point. And so that's what you want to pay attention to. In terms of going through the whole the lines and everything, um, you know, I think that's going down the rabbit hole a bit. All I look for are the circles. So the green circles indicate bullish divergence and the the red circles indicate bearish divergence, okay? And that just means essentially that the RSI is basically going down when prices go in higher. So if we see this one here uh, in here, it's a little bit hard to see because I have so many indicators on here. And um, <clears throat> if you really want to understand it, we can look at it. But essentially, that's what I'm looking for, the circles and those lines. And so the divergences become, become clear on this, essentially... This is a bullish divergence because price was going down, but it was going down at a lower kind of slope than than the uh, price uh, the prices were in this area. So I'm not exactly sure how Joe's coded it, but hopefully that helps. And in terms of going and within these zones, you know, typically you have a 20 and 80 lines as your confirmations, but since you know, uh, in this case, he's using 30 and 70. So when it gets down below, 30 it turns green because that's a much a very oversold zone if we go back a bit it really hasn't been that oversold until back in this region and when we were bottoming out around one trillion dollars and we've since doubled from there so let me go to a bitcoin chart just to show you that and give you a little bit clearer idea of what that looks like on the uh, Bitcoin chart. So similarly, down here, when we were down at 26K, we saw the RSI coming below that 30 line. That's when you see this dark green and then this bottoming signal here. So you see that, that, that RSI bullish divergence, green circle, and then you see these lines go back above the 30 line. That's very bullish. So you could almost trade off of that itself because as we can see, this started running up after that, after these three bullish divergence uh, signals. And uh, then it had some, some bearish divergences in here. Um, but currently we're in a uh, uptrend bullish divergence. So hopefully that helps. And the other thing I want to call your attention to, though, it is also bullish right now is our dynamic true range, our average true range. So this is going to tell you, are you in a buy or sell zone? You can also use this as your dynamic stops. So if I were to turn off some of what we have on here, like our order block detector, um, I don't want to turn these off because I want to call your attention to real quick that we are in a, a new uptrending channel. That's a lot of what we teach in our M3 Active Trader class. Again, you guys that are in Active Trader, we it's one of our core lessons. And essentially, once we can identify a new upward trending channel, the better because the old trend channel has now been negated. We're in an upward trending channel. We're just likely come back to test that lower edge of the channel, but continue on higher. The slope can adjust as we go, but for now, this is what we have to work with our data points. So that's bullish. The uh, dynamic average true range is also flipped to entry zone, which you can see there. I uh, I don't want, well, let me see if I can zoom in it on that. 
Now, sometimes these zigzag a bit, but you don't want to be going bullish when you're in an exit area. This is the time to be short. Uh, and uh, the upper line would be your stop loss on shorts. Similarly, if you're long, you can use this as your stop loss. Now, I would use tighter stops myself. Some people use these average true range, which is calculated through the algorithm. So um, just to touch on that real quick, you know, these are the signals that you get. You get, uh, I haven't shown you the rocket yet, but uh, we have the ERI Pro. Those are those arrows, the early reversal indicator that's been so powerful for us, and uh, hence the name. The uh, Trend Pro, that's the key in the bell. The uh, TSI Pro, when these all align, again, when we have four of them in alignment, that's our four kings. Uh, that's when we see very, very high probability follow-throughs. 90% most of the time. Our order block detector, these are new. Our RSI Pro, which I just described, our Bollinger Bands with the modified standard deviation that I shared, and our Signal Line Pro, which is the other indicator that I showed down in uh, this range. So again, the confluence of these, these are all when they start to align and you have two or three or more of them, that's when to start getting into these trades. Let's take a look at Ethereum. Uh, and I believe, because I believe there's a rocket on Ethereum, uh, my alert did trigger. But uh, let's see, I'll turn out ETH also in an entry zone on the dynamic average true range. And we saw buying signals going in over the weekend, right? So we had TSI signal and should have an ERI in there as well with a mostly green radar. So let's see, the rocket is turned on, but not showing any on this time frame. I thought it was, maybe it's on a weekly, but my alert did go off on ETH. Maybe it didn't close with that, but our rocket on the launch pad is one of our favorite indicators that shows when an imminent rise to the upside is supposed to happen. And um, so, you know, ETH looking pretty good here. Um, we uh, It's been one of our recent picks back in here on a Retire Rich class. You can learn more about our various classes at moonstream.io, as well as sign up for various free things like our free class today. If you'd like to be able to come in and ask questions, or you can scroll down to the bottom and you can see our various programs like Moonstream Active Trader, which is our highest level active trader client or classes. And we also have our re Retire Rich classes on Thursdays, which are more forward looking, looking for future Netflix and Amazon's longer term holds. And I do some private coaching here, which you can learn more about. And of course, uh, get that free trader checklist down at the bottom and sign up for these free trading classes here in Zoom. If you want to sign up there, you can come and ask questions. And then our free Monday newsletter, by the way, a lot of free resources you can sign up for down here below. So uh, let's see, getting back to the charts. Perry says, candle bodies are wicks for drawing lines and channels. I use candle bodies and uh, it sort of depends at times. I like the candle bodies. That's the right way to do it. So if I were to draw a range on this, Let's grab a parallel chart and just draw it here. So, you know, use bodies um, and and probably semi-effective for both, but really you want to look for the candle bodies, not the wicks. Um, you know, sometimes I'll use wicks if, if, it's, if we're seeing lots of topping tails, but I'll usually still draw it along the candle body. So right here we can see this is like kind of a more accurate representation of where I think this will come in. So we could certainly push up to 70K, but I think that is going to be a danger zone. And I'm just going to move that up actually to 70K uh, as uh, Bitcoin crossing up. So, um, you know, definitely I think there's going to be some resistance there, you know, unless they somehow manufacture some big short squeeze. So we have, we've covered that where, where I think we'll have some trouble, but you know, we are in a sort of macro uptrend and a macro bull flag that once it breaks, you know, the measured move on this is if I draw it on the macro side is putting it about 100K, which we've already talked about, especially with my um, 10 factors that could take us to 150K. You can find that on TradingView. Quick jump over to the, uh, the meme coins here. Uh, Brett Token, uh, very interesting, uh, had a nice little run. I uh, have a uh, margin long on this, leverage long from right down and around here and i think it'll get up to around 16 cents and um, i'm kind of using the bollinger bands for that let's see just got an alert for the one hour buy block on the i bits so seeing some buy pressure coming back in i tend to keep on the one hour mostly but we can jump over to this on there so showing those buy orders coming in on the one hour that's interesting 
But really, I'm mostly watching this four hour on the iBit. So I'm not sure why that alert set off, but I will redraw this trend channel and widen it a bit. This could certainly take us back up to 40. And I use this as a precursor for where things are likely to go. But look at this ERI. We had the early reversal indicator right in here, right before about two, eight hours before it gapped up. So this was back on Friday around 8 p.m. before the market closed. Got that bullish ERI. So this four hour giving us some great signals uh, on uh, on here. And uh, so want to keep an eye on these uh, and uh, on that. Now, the DXY, I haven't seen this on the chart. We'll look at the DXY tomorrow. I'll just kind of see where it's at down here. And where's that DXY? Um, you know, it's up a little bit. It's around 104.35. You, you know, that's good. I don't want to get it back above 105.50. So it's kind of holding below there. So uh, that's fine on that. And uh, anything else you guys want to look at, we can move over to some hot movers. But uh, again, if you're watching this replay on YouTube or any of the shorts, go over to cryptomastery.org slash pro and get your hands on these indicators. They are the best we've ever used. We've built them to be that. You can use them in conjunction with other indicators. But if you're just using an RSI or a MACD or all the off-the-shelf indicators, you're using what everybody else is using and you don't have an edge. These indicators give us an edge. Uh, we use them in all of our classes. And you can see them all on this page uh, outlined here. And uh, again, the way to use that is start building positions as they start lining up. There's no one single indicator that's reliable that will be a buy or sell all. Amateurs go in and they buy all or they sell all. That's not the way to do it. You want to be building positions, taking profits out of positions because these indicators work for sell signals as well as buy signals. And, uh, and they work. Um, so, you know, this is how I use, I use them to day trade sometimes. Here's a nice little, uh, a nice little win on using this for day trading. Uh, and there's nine indicators. You get the rocket indicator, which I'll explain next. The crypto screener, which I haven't looked at in a while. The ERI Pro, uh, the Trend Pro, the TSI Pro, and the RSI Pro. Those four things are a four horsemen. When they align, it's go time. Plus our order block detector showing buy blocks and sell blocks. The Bollinger Bands, which we've modified specifically and coded for using with crypto and that Signal Line Pro. So um, you can use these for Confluence and really making sure you're getting into a trade that makes sense. The more that line up, maybe the heavier you go into a trade. Let's take a look at AVAX. AVAX showing some strength here today. Uh, had a bullish ERI back over here, right out of the buy blocks. So that was a early cue there. We are, looks kind of like a rocket, except it's um, maybe not sitting on, yeah, no, it is. So here's a great example. AVAX showing a rocket on the launch pad. If we go back in time here, we can see some of the previous rockets like this one here. This is textbook where it's a full candle body. Consider that the rocket fuel. And the wick down below, consider that the fuse. It's got to be sitting at something like this. We've got a number of these in a row on AVAX. AVAX loves these rockets. And they once you that fuse is lit, they shoot up. The bigger the candle, the more rocket fuel shoots up in the sky. And then typically they run out of fuel and come back down. We're seeing a, a new rocket here on AVAX um, pushing up against the 50-day EMA. So I'd like to see this back above 30 to sort of confirm that because otherwise 30 might act as resistance there but uh let me just see i'm going to put rocket breakout there you go you guys looking for some opportunities uh there will be some some of these others that are selling off had such a big run yesterday like helium was up 20 percent yesterday so seeing a bit of a pullback but look at this let's let's dissect this further on avax and if the daily isn't giving us clear trends let's look at a weekly and um, sure enough, we've got an ERI, an early reversal indicator on the weekly. And we also have a two inside up here. So that's good. And then we are looking for and waiting for this TSI to go green on ABAX. Last time it did that back here. Let's see how that trade performed. If we zoom out there in this was a nice push up on ABAX. It ran all the way up here. So, um, you know, these are the clues to look at and try to get ahead of them. But. I'd wait for at least two on our trader success checklist. So if we wanted to refresh this, I will just refresh this uh, page. And that's not what I meant to do here. Hold on, I'm going to do it a few times because it only lets it go clockwise. And okay, the refresh is going to be a different button, I imagine. So 
Um, where is this thing? I'm in the PDF. Maybe you're not, it's not doable. I've done it before. This is it right here, I believe. R refresh. Nope. That's uh, clicking it around. Okay. Never mind. Well, uh, the point of this is, uh, what's the point of this? Maybe that's the refresh. I know it's in here, you guys. Where is it? Refresh the page, share, export. Anyway, uh, these things are always changing around menus and everything else. So at any rate, let's just uh, undo these. The, what I'm getting at here is we had an ERI on Avalanche there. We had a three inside up, so that's two on the score. You'll start doing the score in your head. So once you get to above two, you're in good shape. I think ABAX is looking good here for a swing trade and to see it break, break back above the 21 and 50 day EMAs where start having more uh, scores to add to that position. All right, let's take a look at uh, fetch coin. You know, this thing is just, uh, it's got the ERI. It's got an RSI on the weekly time frame. Um, fetch has been moving up nicely. Now, remember, this is changing to over to ASI token with the merger between Ocean and uh, Ajax. Okay, so uh, beware of where you hold fetch if you're buying any, because on Coinbase, at least, you have to move it out to a wallet and uh, then they don't do that conversion automatically. That's kind of why I'm staying away from it for now. Although I have to say, look at this beautiful ERI setting up. And with the RSI going green, um, Fetch coin looks good to me here. We'll dive in it deeper tomorrow in our M3 class and more details. Uh, so looking at these, look at these weekly charts here. ERI is starting to sort of come up and these oversold zones. We want to wait for that TSI to cross above 20 to confirm these because when they do they sure do run this is peeling back the curtain you guys like the wizard of oz this gives you what nobody else can see so i'm going to set an alert on that you can set alert on all of these so i want to say crossing up over 20 for my confirmation i'm going to do once per bar close so i know that every time file coin goes up above 20 because look at that these are usually great times to buy uh, and uh, when it, before it goes higher. So um, just skim me through here to see if anything we'd like. Let's jump over to our crypto mastery list. Then we can look at some hot movers. How are we doing on time? We're making good time, you guys. So how about that? Uh, I have no thoughts on 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 Trump coin, Perry. I'm, I'm not going to pull that up, actually. Um, you know, yeah, we, we really don't get into meme coins. Uh, we talk about that in an M3 trader at times. But uh, so you can bring that up in class tomorrow when we talk about some meme coins. I'll talk about Bread Token, which I did. Uh, great name, by the way, of course. Uh, Pepe Coin had a nice little rally as well. So, you know, if we wanted to um, kind of check those out. But, but you know, be careful with those. Remember, there's zero utility, although, you, you know, the indicators will give you signs when it's a good time to get into those. So um, anyway, let's go through here on our crypto mastery list. Of course, Ethereum. Um, also looking good here on the weekly time frame, bullish ERI, bullish RSI, and uh, we're just kind of waiting for the TSI and the other ones to go green, but uh, that's looking pretty promising and to break out of this kind of mini flagpole. Uh, and uh, with the new announcements for the ETH ETF, you know, I would say good time to be adding to your ETH position. Solana also looking very good here on this weekly time frame. So getting back above the 20 week, look at it breaking above that trend line resistance above. These are all bullish signs on our trade success checklist. So uh, we've got a TSI green, RSI green. And uh, let me just check the ATR on this, the average true range, because... Uh, we want to see that thing's been green this whole time on a weekly basis. That thing flipped all the way back here, you guys. So that's why I love this average true range because over time it can give you some great clues. If we do go to a daily, on the daily it is just flipped to entry mode, but it can be a little choppy in here. Look at all this buy pressure down below on Solana, though. I um, I bought some down in this range. I had limit orders on 125, 120, and 115. Canceled those yesterday. Bought into some on the pump here. I just uh, I don't think this thing comes back down on that range again. If it does, huge buying opportunity between 115 and 125 on Solana. And uh, we'll just kind of monitor things. Bollinger Bands showing lots of room to the upside. And uh, so um, looking good there on Solana. I think that uh, is the play for this bull run. My entire IRA is in Solana at the moment. And uh, we'll update as we go. Let's see. Uh, near protocol showing signs of strength as well. Uh, while most things are down today, 
Uh, we've got near also with entry showing on the dynamic average true range. What are we looking for here, you guys? I mentioned it earlier in this class for extra credit. We want to do what as early as possible. Okay. The there's this is a downtrending channel that has broken into to the upside. So that is kind of our modus operandi of this bull run is identifying these new trend channels as soon as we can because we can ride them like a wave. Now, this doesn't mean this is the trend channel here, but we have to say that this is now in an upward trend. I don't know why this thing won't let me draw one. There you go. So whether it's whether the, the velocity of this, we're, we're unsure of at this point, but we at least know that we're in a new uptrending channel. And it looks like a pretty steep, uh, so far, it looks like a pretty steep um, trajectory is the right word. And so I'll draw it there until further notice. But this is nice for near protocol. We have the ATR going green. We have a nice buy block on near showing. This is Now, this is following the footsteps of elephants. This is money flow, you guys. These fluorescent buy red, uh, red boxes, money flowing into near. Getting a little bit overbought on the TSI, but on the weekly time frame, I think it's looking pretty good. We've got a rocket on the weekly TSI, so that's bullish, you guys. And let me turn the rocket back on. I'm trying to turn off the ATR. And uh, now the, the, the only thing that concerns me a bit is our radar is mostly red. We've got weekly green, but uh, daily not so much. But we do have a rocket here on support. And uh, we do like that. I've got green TSI above 20. I like near here, you guys. I may add to my position here today. And so that's a good one. We'll, we'll look at more of our buy recommendations tomorrow in the M3 Active Trader class. Question from Paul. Is a dynamic ATR one of the pro indicators or is it just a regular? It's, it's one of our crypto mastery indicators. And um, it's part of the, uh, the basic uh, bundle that's part of our M3 Active Trader. It's something that uh, I believe Joe is working on a pro version of, but uh, it's currently not a. It's it's it's. If if you need that, Paul, reach out to me. I know uh, we've done some private client work. Um, we're gonna try to add that. I'll have to figure out if we can add that to the pro pack because I I do like it. There's a couple of them we sort of deprecated, but uh, reach out. We'll we'll figure out how to get you that. Okay, so INJ. Uh, also in here, not looking terribly good, just up a little bit on the weekly, but the daily looking slightly better. Breaking up back above that 50-day EMA, but um, I don't know, have some headwinds right up top here. It's going to be a little bit challenging. So let's do this here. Oh my God, XRP actually moving. Um, well, look at that. So, uh, you know, like this thing goes, just doesn't do a whole lot of anything over the long term. But that buy pressure, this might be significant, you guys, because this indicates and signifies money flow coming into that market, actual buying, uh, the bullish ERI on the weekly time frame. So slightly bullish. It's just the problem with XRP is it just kind of sells off and never goes anywhere. You know, above when it gets over a dollar, I might look at it again, but up 9% today either way. Pepe coin, um, Pepe coin, you know, look, looking good. Look at all that money flowing into Pepe coin. Uh, that's a big order block. And on a weekly time frame, how does it look? Very nice on the weekly time frame, riding that 21 week EMA, getting a bullish RSI anyway. And look at all this buy pressure here on the Pepe. I was watching it back in here and thinking this might go again. Sure enough, I missed out on that. But now we know. And uh, so if we're going to get into the weeds with the meme coins, might as well, might as well look at uh, Brett Token. Let's see. Let me pull this up and see how that's doing today. Trade on the perpetual futures on MEXC. Same, same. This is a weekly time frame. Uh, not a whole lot of data there for it, but looking good. Like on that buy a little buy block. So uh, anyway, um, but mostly red on the radar. So I'm looking for quick swing hits, swing uh, trades, and base hits. Okay, guys. I think we've covered just about everything, unless we go over to couple things we can look at uh, here on here we can look at uh, the the uh, crypto movers and trading view yeah so crypto crypto gainers today this sometimes gives us a good little uh, clue 
if it's something we're already kind of watching. So what do we have in here? Um, DeFi Titan swap. I don't know. I'm reluctant to open this up, but let's take a look at it. This is probably this is a new one here. Not familiar with that at all. Uh, very low volume, it would appear. So this is not not what we want to look at. To consider. Let's just see. Looking at the uh, volume here. Oh, well, that should have given it away. Titan swap only seven thousand. We want to be at least forty million on these. So gaming NFTs collectibles, uh, heroes of Mavia. I've never heard of this project before. Let's see what it looks like here. Has uh, some decent volume on on the uh, books. So you know, nice little chart though. I mean, look at that. You know, don't lift, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. How does that go? So we've got a TSI ERI forming here on this Heroes of Mavia, and you can certainly draw this trend line breakout. Where do you find this? It's on Crypto.com. Not sure you can find it on Uniswap or anything, but look at that, you guys. Okay. Well, I mean, look. Heavy buy pressure. We're back above the 21 and 50. Uh, a bit overbought on this, but it can remain up in this region for quite a while. Where else could you find this? This is not financial advice, by the way. It's educational purposes, but this is available on BitGet, Binance, Bybit, and the usual suspects, uh, MEXC, Femex, Get, a Gate IO, but not on your Coinbase's, etc. But uh, at any rate, it's one to put on the radar because... Because what is our filter for our coins that we talk about often is what is the ROI if it gets back to old highs? That's a 3x, a 3x to get back to old highs. So, you know, that was kind of it's worth considering. I'm not, um, you know, big in the gaming space, but what I may do is add this to our watch list and over into our kind of gaming uh, segment here. Somewhere in here, I've got a gaming uh, list of gaming projects and uh, where in the world did that thing go i may have to rebuild rebuild that so i thought i had a gaming list all right well i'm going to add it to our mr crypto mastery list and uh we'll i'll have to remember that to put it on a gaming list so there you go let's go back and see what else we have so that was maybe uh let's see heroes of maybe that is and uh let's see andy coin myro not familiar with let's see the volume here 52 million uh let's see that's in memes okay myro the meme coin pepe of course on this now how is it so there's twice as much circulating supply i mean the volume on pepe is 2.3 billion today so that's a big one so let's look at myro just in case we don't know and sometimes you know sometimes we do find some good projects on these these heavy movers like uh, ator back in the day uh, so this is interesting here. This is a three inside up trading pattern. We have a bullish ERI. And where is Myro available? Not really familiar with it on Pith, on Bybit, Kraken, BitGet, MEXC. And so let's take a look at the daily chart here. But look at that little buy block in there. It looks like you know, certainly the meme coins are getting there more than their fair share of buying volume. But I'd want to see this uh, back above its 50-day EMA. And uh, let's just see what Myro coin, uh, Myro looks like, uh, meme coin. And let's see, Myro price, what does this thing look like? Uh, it's a dog, apparently. It's the Solana dog. Well, all right. Solana had bread token first, but they they let those uh, guys on base chain come and get it. So I don't know. I'm not terribly crazy about this uh, image here, but like, what is it? It's a Solana, Solana meme coin, so why not? There you go. All right, so we've covered that on Myro and Heroes of Maybe as that one. Anything else you guys want to look at? I'm here for you, but uh, certainly here's this dog whiff hat. I haven't looked at that in a while, but certainly uh, make sure to have these indicators. Uh, Dr. T, how's it going? How is Meme Andy? We can look at that too. So yeah, look at these meme coins are starting to look interesting. This is a reasonably bullish candle. I don't know if I have my volume turned off or there isn't any. So it would seem not a lot of volume on these. But starting to see, uh, I mean, look, the, there's buying volume. There's money flow on that. I'm going to put an alert on, you know, I want to see buy. I want to buy into strength. So basically, if this thing can close above this old range right here where it was resistance, then I want to know. And uh, that would be a sign for me that this might be a good buy, although I'm pretty sure it's not easy to find either. So this dog with hat uh, is 
put that alert right there. Okay, where is it available? We've got it on crypto, Kraken, Binance. Those of you guys mostly have and by bit uh, i'm using mexc for a lot of these obscure ones like brett coins so why not all right um one more we'll do as you want to look at uh, andy coin here where's andy well, let's see 11 million trading volumes so not a huge amount huge circulating supply so here's these other things you want to look at though now um pepe's 420 trillion though wow i didn't realize uh, and uh, all right, well, I mean, Andy's worth looking at. Let's take a look. So it's uh, looks like it looks like the Brett token girlfriend almost. And what chain is this on? I'm not familiar with Andy. It's just a yellow version of the uh, Brett uh, meme coin, apparently. But at any rate, the chart looks fairly good. It's also on crypto. So it's uh, it's on BitGet and crypto. Not too easy to find. You can probably find it on maybe okay if, if it's solana based then it's going to be uh, on a phantom wallet you can probably find it there but three days bullish signals here uh would have been great to see it three days ago two days ago we had the uh, bullish eri trigger the tsi go green and we're having uh the uh the trend indicator the bell also going green and the signal green so i think this could see some upside here uh the how much upside let's just see if this thing likes the fibonacci's so it uh, came right down into this range, dipped a little bit below. Where could it go to if we do a fib on that? You know, this thing could push up here a bit, 45 cents, I'd say. And, but, you know, not financial advice. These meme coins are tricky business. So, all right, you guys, that's all we have time for. I'm going to uh, kind of bow out here, get on to some other things. But you guys have a great week, everybody. And uh, don't forget to uh, go over and uh, find out about our other services if you're watching this on YouTube. And um, you can find out about our free information here, our newsletter, weekly trainings, our trader success checklist, and uh, certainly our active trader class is excellent. You can look, click on that. And that is a monthly class that has some of our indicators included. We do monthly classes. You have daily access to me inside of Signal and great room full of traders also chiming in on economic data and what they're seeing in the markets. So it's uh, very much a great community. Exclusive members area with other training videos and training vaults and bonuses like the trading portfolio, DCA trading templates, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, find out about that. Uh, go over to moonstream.io slash M3. Many of you in class are already in this course. So we'll see you guys uh, tomorrow. And this is me. Yes, I do trade. This is my setup that I'm talking to you from now. And uh, so find out about that if you'd like. I'll put that in the chat. And I guess that will see it for today, you guys. We'll unpack this a little deeper tomorrow in the M3 class. So we will dive into that and look at DXY and some of the other things as well as trading opportunities. Uh, you know, I haven't put out more buy alerts because I was expecting this pullback today. And, um, you know, that is a uh, uh, <clears throat> not surprising after four up days and that big move over the weekend and that push yesterday. Uh, but here's what I think. We'll talk about this more tomorrow, but um, when I think we are, when I think we're setting up for the ideal bounce and when to really be ready to get back in this market. So thanks everybody. Uh, we'll see you next week. And uh, if you're watching this on the YouTube, uh, we put the replay up, make sure and like, and subscribe to that. Cause we also put out short clips that will be helpful to you without having to sit through the whole uh, hour and a half. Okay. Cheers everybody. See you guys next week. Bye-bye.